Right. Hello, everyone. Good evening to all of you. I'm happy to see almost 50 participants tonight. No? So uh, I hope you and your loved ones are all safe and healthy. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge you no, for spending your Tuesday evening with us. And I'm thrilled to be your guide tonight no, on this journey into the fascinating world of technical analysis for stocks. Again, po, this is part three of our basic education on stock trading learning series. And before we dive into the intricacies of the candlestick patterns, the core beliefs of technical analysis, let me take a moment to introduce myself. I consider myself one of the lucky ones in life kasi pagka panganak ko pa lang, meron na agad akong billiones. Again, ako po si JP Billiones. I used to have an above average paying job but for some reason, hindi po ako nakapag-ipon ng pera and I was even drowning in debt. However, yung ibang tao po, parang wala silang problems when it comes to handling their finances. So I asked myself, ano ba yung ginagawa ng mga taong may pera na hindi ginagawa ng mga taong baon sa utang? And that question led me to become a personal finance and investment literacy advocate. Yung passion and purpose ko po in life is to help more Filipinos appreciate the value of saving their hard-earned money and of course, no, consider investing to achieve their financial goals. I'm the business development section head for the Mindanao desk of First Metro Securities, the stock brokerage house of the Metro Bank Group. And as you can see from my professional certifications, uh, yung circle of competence ko po revolves around the topics of saving, budgeting, financial goal setting, investing in stocks, pooled funds, bonds, and active trading using technical analysis, which is our uh, discussion for tonight. This year, I also became a bona fide member of the Finance Educators Association. So I'm very happy with that. And over the years, I've had the privilege of worth working with First Metro Sec, where yung goal po namin is not just about financial success, but also empowering individuals like yourselves no? with the knowledge and tools na kailangan to make informed investment decisions. Lalo na po sa amin, sa business development and market education team, uh, we really love our job because we get to inspire people no, na ma-upgrade yung money management skills nila and create awareness of investment opportunities that are legitimate, affordable, and of course, accessible. Now, yung market education efforts po namin, we aim to bridge the gap between complexity and understanding. Now, we try our best na you not only grasp the fundamentals, but also feel confident in applying them to your own trading strategies. Now, we used to conduct these sessions on-site and face-to-face, -face, pero because of the pandemic, nag-shift po kami ng webinar format. But again, it's very amazing yung technology, how it enables us to add value kahit saan man kayo located today. Now, before we embark on this learning journey, I'd love to know a bit more about you, no? especially to our 69 participants tonight. So can you please chat? Where are you joining us today? No? So can you please type your location, either country or city, in the chat box? Okay, let me see the chat box. Ayan, thank you so much. No? You are there. <laughs> so we have here people from Pangasinan, from Bulacan, uh, people from Cebu City, no? so may mga Bisaya here as well, which is my local dialect din. No? So mayong gabi idiha sa inyo ang tanan. Uh, we also have people from Laguna, from Pasig, more from Cebu City. No? Ang dami. No? Seems like we have a uh, lot of Cebuanos in the house tonight. Uh, people from Bacoor, uh, QC, and even OFW. You see, you see here people from Dubai. No? So uh, likely mga OFWs to sila. And more people from Visaya, Cebu, Leyte, and back to Luzon, no? Paranaque, uh, back to Mindanao, that's uh, Manolo Fortich. Uh, another OFW from Milan. No? I'm not sure if this is Milan in uh, uh, no? in a uh, overseas na country, di ba? But uh, there's also some local places here in the Philippines na Milan din yung tawag. Uh, we also have people here from Batangas, Iloilo, no? so we also have mga Ilonggo in the house, and even mga Boholano, no? we have people here. No, dami, seems like and daming taga-Visayas tonight. Uh, more OFWs from Malaysia. Uh, yeah, I think dami, no? more from Malaysia. So 
thank you so much and I'm grateful na <laughs> meron na akong uh, kababayan no so we have here people from Davao as well no? where I am actually based right now no so imagine no how incredible it is to see uh, a very diverse na audience coming together to explore the world of investments and of course trading now we acknowledge po na ito po yung demographics ng stock market investors sa Philippines as of 2022. Now we all know that we are a country of over 100 million in population. But did you know that only 1.71 million yung stock market accounts sa Philippines? That's less than two percent. Now most of them at 1.25 million online accounts. So you can actually see there that people prefer online than the traditional account. Now, around 75% are locally employed. I think that's where most of us are also, uh, where most of us are, no? locally employed. Pero meron na rin gaining interest from OFWs and even students. No? Uh, we see the OFWs already, but uh, just in case, no, meron po tayong mga students uh, in attendance tonight, can you please chat what college or university you're attending? Because there's really no, there's 1.1% of stock training accounts that are from students, which I think is a challenge for us as well. No, as uh, siguro tayo na employed, mas meron tayong financial capability, no, kasi nagtatrabaho na tayo. Though we have more responsibilities, but it's amazing, no, na uh, even students, no, as young as they are, they are able to make the most of the long term growth potential of the stock market. Now, majority are still from Metro Manila, no? Uh, 81.5%, but the rest of the country has yet to catch up. Now, maraming taga Visayas in attendance uh, ngayong gabi, but uh, for people from Visayas, you only compromise 3.7% of the 2% to invest in the stock market. Dito naman po sa Davao, no? uh, in Mindanao as a whole, we only comprise 2.5% of the 2% to invest in the stock market. Uh, so, uh, to know you better, how about you guys? No? Yung 84 participants natin, no? dumadami tayo as time passes by, meron na ba kayong mga stock trading or any form of investment account? So, siguro you can please share a quick yes or no in the chat box. No, uh, If yes, uh, we would like to know as well kung if it's with First MetroSec or other friendly competitors namin. Ayan! And dami, no? So it seems like uh, uh, and dami nagsasabi ng yes and majority of you, I think, no? And dami. <laughs> Ayan, it's very heartwarming to see na and dami pa lang existing First Metro Securities client here as well tonight, no? And we're happy that uh, you have actually availed of our market education pa rin, no? Continuous learning. And I really appreciate that. Uh, some of you here have uh, accounts naman no? uh, with our friendly competitors. And uh, that's okay. No? Uh, we're happy na at the end of the day, it's all about mas marami bang Pinoy nag invest no? But uh, hopefully in the future, you'll be able to see ano din yung mga uh, advantages of having a first MetroSec account. So you might consider to diversify as well. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you so much. No? Ayan. Thank you so much. No? And... Uh, it seems like no na uh, in general parang marami ngayon na medyo season in investor sila or trader kasi meron na silang existing account but for those na wala po no i'm not trying to alienate you no uh, maybe nagsisimula pa lang po kayo uh, either kung saan man kayo na spectrum uh, you're about to start or meron na kayo tagal na kayo sa market i hope you learn a lot from our discussion tonight and especially for those na wala pa, those who are considering to start their investing journey, yan po yung reason bakit kami sa business development and market education team, we conduct financial and investment literacy sessions. No? It's very humbling lang and fortunate for us that we are regularly invited by private, public, and academic institutions uh, such as here you have uh, Jollibee, Department of Trade and Industry, uh, University of the Philippines, uh, the Philippine Stock Exchange, yung regulator namin, uh, Junior Confederation of Finance Associations of the Philippines, or JCFAP. Uh, for those of you who are existing students, no, you're probably familiar of this. So, yeah, no, especially uh, around this time of the year, no, madami kami invitations from uh, collegiate or academic institutions or organizations no, kasi they regularly conduct financial literacy caravans. And of course, no. Uh, here's another example from Greenwich and uh, government agencies such as Bureau of Fire Protection, uh, Bureau of the Treasury, the Department of Education, and Embassy of 
the Philippines. So, so I'm just trying to share with you here no, that uh, we're very fortunate enough to have uh, these invitations. No? And I hope na, I hope na in the future, we get to do one as well sa mga respective organizations ninyo. Now, without further ado, let's get started on learning about technical analysis. No? And let's try to discuss no, how to plan your trades effectively. That brings us back to our webinar tonight. No? Again, this is an introduction to technical analysis. This is, again, part three of our basic education on stock trading learning series. All right. And this evening, we're going to talk about the following. No? So first, uh, how are basic candlesticks formed? No? So yan po yung una natin i-discuss. That's very basic. No? You see some as well sa virtual background. So paano ba yun sila uh, na-form, di ba? Second, the three core beliefs of technical analysis. And this is very important because uh, if this psychology no, or this mindset, no, we should be able to uh, have these core beliefs. No? And because if not, we will not be able to make the most of what technical analysis can provide no, to our arsenal of trading strategies. And of course, uh, third, how do we plan our trades? No? And I'm very excited for this because uh, usual siguro no, napapansin niya that uh, I tend to have uh, engagements. No? I mean, uh, yung medyo engaging na discussion, calculations, uh, sa best part one and part two, uh, from time to time, I have questions. But for this uh, best series no, or this part three, uh, we're going to uh, have all of those questions towards the end, no? Uh, because nandun po, we have, I'm, I prepared with you an uh, interactive na experience, no? How it feels to actually trade stocks. And I hope you enjoy that as much I, as uh, how I enjoy to deliver it as well to different uh, uh, entities, no? So uh, let's get excited for that. And lastly, uh, Mr. Kyle Garcia from our Equity Research Division will share how to interpret First Metrosex Traders Playbook Research Report because from the things that we're going to learn today, we we get to have a uh, edge, no? Kung baga, kasi pag we have the Traders Playbook, it has some features that can help you uh, screen, no? Or can help you find opportunities in the market. Now, if you have any questions no, regarding sa presentation, uh, feel free to ask them sa Q&A ng Zoom panel. No? Uh, some people tend to put it in the chat box, but uh, paminsan kasi if I have questions in between, paminsan natatabunan po siya. So I recommend, highly recommend to log all your questions doon po sa Q&A panel. Para later, at the end of our presentation, meron tayong time for our Q&A to answer your questions live. Okay, now as we embark on this journey together, yung goal ko po dito is not just to present information, but again, create an interactive space and I encourage you to actively learn by participating in a discussion and let's do our best to make this parang collaborative na learning experience, lalo na po doon sa activity natin towards the tail end of our presentation. So if you guys are ready no, to the 97 participants right now, can you please chat ready when you're good to go? All right. <laughs> Just my simple ways of checking if you're still there. <laughs> Paminsan naglalag siya. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Thank you so much. I guess uh, a lot of you are ready already. <laughs> so let's start our discussion by first defining technical analysis. No? So in technical analysis, we are trying to study and understand historical price action. Okay, so pinag-aaralan po natin and we're trying to understand anong nangyari sa price action in the past. Now, why do we do this? Because we try no, to find hints into where the price may probably be headed. Now, so uh, let me just qualify, no? we are trying to find hints, no, just hints, because we don't really know where the market will go. So we're just trying to find those hints into where no, the price may probably be headed. So again, I'm trying to emphasize that probably be headed because, uh, again, there's no way for us to tell where the market will go, no, na, it will go up, it will go down, no? So we can only talk about probabilities because we cannot 
control the market. No? So it's always a probability. What's the probability that it will go down? If it will go down, where will it probably be headed? If it will go up, where will it be probably be going higher? No? So again, we're going to share that. No? Uh, technically, that's your uh, support and resistance levels. So in general, po, this is a short-term approach to investing. So this is quite different than your best part one and part two, wherein we look at P-E ratio, earnings per share, uh, price to book value, uh, siguro kung more advanced level, yung mga discounted cash flows. Those no, fundamental analysis are medyo long-term approach to investing. But ito po, itong pag-usapan natin today, is actually a short-term approach to investing. Now, we can never tell if which is uh which approach is better than the other no for me it's always a good idea to merge the two studies no siguro you can filter no you can filter using the fundamentals nor fundamental analysis to identify if there are what uh, which good stocks are good to buy no which stocks are good to buy uh, but when it comes to timing your entries and exits planning your trades to optimize no kung lalo na if you are quite uh, opportunistic no with your uh, trades then you can marry no fundamental analysis with technical analysis to optimize your trades okay now the weapon of choice no of technical analysts are price charts no in general ito po talagang ginagamit nila ang daming classic classing price charts out there meron pong line chart may bar chart may haken ashi chart pero yung most commonly used is your candlestick chart no? So, ito, no, it shows us how the stock price moved over a certain period of time. So, mapapansin nyo, no, uh, dyan pa lang sa nakikita niya sa image, there's a certain trend, no? Uh, later, no, I'll be teaching you paano na form itong individual na candlesticks. So, before we go any further, let's have a quick recap on the basic concepts, no? And magsisimula tayo sa regular trading hours ng PSE. Because this is important to know because when we know specific price levels like open and close, that is uh, important in order to be able to draw our candlesticks. Now, the market pre-opens at 9 a.m. So you can post orders until it opens at 9.30 a.m. Pero yung modifications and cancellations, pwede lang po siya until 9.15 a.m. Now, when the morning session starts, yung orders are continuously accepted, automatically matched, based lang po yan siya sa best market price available at those times. So, ito po yung nakikita natin na transactions sa ticker tape. So, we'll discuss that a bit in the next slide. Now, yung morning trading session, it continues until the market takes a recess from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So, during this period po, uh, orders can't be entered, modified, or canceled. Now, yung afternoon session naman, it resumes at 1 p.m. and trading continues up until the market pre-closes from 2.45 p.m. to 2.50 p.m. Now, orders can't be entered, pero yung modifications, cancellations, pwede po siya up until 2.48 p.m. Now, yung market then enters the runoff period at 2.50 p.m. So, during this time, only limit orders at closing prices can be entered. Kung di na po gumagalaw yung presyo, closing price na lang po. And that happens until the market closes at 3 p.m. So it's very important because uh, knowing those times, we are able to know ano po yung opening price, ano po yung closing price, ano yung highest price it went all throughout the trading session, and ano rin po yung lowest price it went during that session. Now, when you turn on your favorite business news channels or open yung first Metrosec na account nyo, uh, you can actually see what we call a ticker tape. Uh, yung gumagalaw-galaw po sa... TV or sa account natin. So uh, this tells us yung information ng stocks that were traded. So you can usually see three basic transactions here. So in this example, uh, you have here MBT, 66, and 1,360. So ano po bang ibig sabihin ng mga symbols and numbers na to? So first is your stock symbol where MBT is short for Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company. Second is the price at which the stock was traded. And third is the total number of shares that was traded. So to summarize, pag nakikita po natin to sa uh, ticker tape, this transaction tells us that 1,360 shares of Metro Bank was traded at 66 pesos per share. Okay, so ganun lang po. Okay, and 
when it comes to investing in the stock market, no? so uh, let's say nakabili na po tayo, uh, there's only two ways for you to earn, either dividends or price appreciation. So syempre, no, pag binibili ng investors yung stocks ng companies, uh, it's because of its growth potential. Kaya nga, di ba, naririnin natin always, no? the way for you to earn in the stock market right now no, is to buy low and sell high. No? That's the only way for you to have gains no, or capital gains from your investments. With this, no, with this, uh, parang it begs the question, ano ba yung nagda-drive ng stock prices? Ano ba nagpo-push siya kanya to higher levels? Or on the contrary, ano ba yung nag-weigh down sa price ng stock? In essence po, no, yung price, it moves due to the interplay. No? It's always a uh, interplay between these two things. You have your supply and your demand. That's between your buyers and your sellers. No, yung sellers, meron silang stocks na pwedeng ibenta. Yung buyers, meron din silang gusto na presyo to buy those stocks. So let's consider the following examples no, for better appreciation. So una, uh, why do prices increase? No? So for this scenario po, imagine yourself, no? uh, di ba nakikita natin sa movies, paminsan yung mga auction, di ba? So in this case, let's say yung auction are high-end art and collectibles. Now, syempre, no, yung mga buyers, uh, they attend no? because they want to buy pieces that they like to own. Pero hindi lang naman isa yung gustong bumili nun. There are also other interested buyers. So syempre, for for the person to win no or for, for them to get that uh, auction or that item they need to outbid one another. So in this case no the greater demand for the piece the higher the bid price can go. No? so ganun lang po 'yun. Pero if that may be too complex I understand no kasi lalo na to hindi to uh, hindi to always nakikita natin sa Filipino tradition, 'di ba? Or sa Filipino setting. Uh, siguro we can use the example ng COVID-19 no? uh, for example ng COVID outbreak diba? there was an increased demand for face mask and alcohol so during that time wala pa pong nagbebent o wala pa, wala pa masyadong nagmamanufacture ng alcohol and face mask na ganun karami so maliit po yung supply Pero people found an urgent need for these products kasi kailangan-kailangan siya during that time. Kaya napansin nyo during the pandemic, no? uh, some are even willing to buy above their suggested retail prices. Kaya ako personally, nakabili ako ng box of 50 masks uh, for as high as 600 pesos per box. No? <laughs> because nga, maliit lang yung supply, then it's a buyer's market. No? Like tipong they can actually sell their uh they can actually sell their face mask at higher prices because maliit ang supply mataas yung demand because it's needed now remember the stock market is always forward looking so syempre pag yung growth prospects ng company is maganda rosy then demand for their stock will increase uh that will happen because there will be more interested buyers and yung existing shareholders naman, syempre, no, kung maganda yung prospects, kung ikaw may existing na hawak ka sa stocks, hindi ka masyadong inclined to sell your stocks. Di ba? Now, imagine that situation. Those with stocks, hindi sila inclined to sell it. So, konti lang yung supply. Then, yung buyers gusto nila bilhin yung stocks. So, again, this will encourage yung buyers to offer higher prices for that stock. And they will outbid their competitors depende kung gaano nila ka gusto yung stock na yun. And for that reason, it pushes the price up. Okay? So that's how stock prices increase. Now, uh, let's move now. Uh, here's a scenario para mas ma-visualize natin. That's the concept. But how does that play out on a trading day? So here's a scenario where the stock price actually increase. No? It changes through the day, but in general, umakyat siya for that day. Uh, it opened at this price level and closed at a higher price. Okay, uh, Buyers were obviously in control of the whole session, kaya yung overall sentiment for this stock is actually positive or bullish. No? So yung term na bullish, it comes from the way yung paano nag a yung bull, no? gamit yung horns niya, syempre, no? it attacks upwards. And similar to how prices increase during this session. Now, we can represent the day's price action no? by drawing a candlestick. And we draw the candlestick body from the open 
to the close. Okay, so ganun po pag uh, drawing ng candlestick body no? from the open to the closing price. Now, mapapansin nyo po that the body is colored green kasi nga po yung closing price is higher than your opening price. If the closing price is higher than the opening price, green po yung body ng kandila. So pag nakikita nyo po sa price chart na green yung candlestick body niya, then ibig sabihin it closed higher than the opening price. And when you see this, no, yung complete green na body lang, uh, tawag dito po is bullish marubozo. And this may signal a continuation to the upside kasi all throughout the session, binibili siya at a higher price. Now second, how about when stock prices decrease naman? No? So uh, dial back naman po tayo. Now, instead of a high-end auction, I want you to remember yung mga clearance sales during the pandemic. I think we all saw that. We experienced that. Uh, yung mga businesses, they were moving out. Uh, some of them were even trying to lighten their inventory uh, to a point that okay lang sa kanila to sell even at a discounted price. No? Noon, natutuwa na tayo at 10-20% discount. But during the pandemic, there were stores going as high as 50-70% discount. Because gusto lang nila i-dispose yung inventory nila. Turn their inventory into cash. No? So, nung nagkaroon ng quarantine methods, no, na-implement siya, uh, necessary din naman yun kasi uh, it's order to contain the spread of the COVID-19. So, syempre, yung mga malls, mga stores, and mga restaurants, they closed down. And syempre, consumer demand was expected to greatly decrease no? because some of those stores are brick and mortar. You had to go to the stores to buy their products no but if people are not allowed to go out then uh how do they expect the walk ins no so yung ibang business nga diba napansin niyo they partnered with grocery outlets para mabenta lang po yung ready to cook na perishable goods kaya there were times diba na nakakabili ka ng mang inasal na ready to cook na, na chicken uh, paminsan ready to fry lang na Jollibee na uh, chicken no so there were times like that no? kasi again those are perishable goods they just want to clear the inventory and avoid further losses now again let me repeat this no the stock market is forward looking so syempre kung may imminent risk to the future growth prospects of the company yung demand for the stock will actually decrease no syempre no kung paanghit yung prospects niya then who would want to buy it no Again, people buy for price appreciation. So if expected na pangit yung outlook sa kanya, the demand for that stock will decrease. And syempre, kung ikaw, existing shareholder ka, during that time na hindi masyadong maganda yung outlook, then you are more inclined to sell your stock. Diba? Mas inclined ka to lighten your position to take some risk off your portfolio. Now, depending po sa urgency, sellers might be willing to take a lower bid price na paminsan diba during kasagsagan ng covid no grabe yung drop ng market during that time because nga there was an urgent need to deliver or sorry uh, to uh decrease exposure to equities because of its outlook no yung impact ng covid to the companies no lalo na sa profitability ng companies and syempre they did this just to lighten their position and that's what pulls price down diba so I hope no uh that was a good explanation to you how stock prices decrease. Now that's the concept. Let's move to how it plays on a trading day. No, so here's a scenario where stock price decreased. No, so it opened at this price level, okay, and closed at a lower price. So I, uh, you would argue with me that uh, sellers were obviously no, in control of the whole session. Kaya nga, no, when we see this price action, yung overall sentiment for this stock is actually negative or bearish. Okay, bearish. No? Bakit? No? It's a new animal. <laughs> bearish siya. So the term comes from the way no, uh, kung paano nag-a-attack yung bear. No? Diba? They have their paws, then they attack using their claws. And they slash downwards. So, uh, that's the reason bakit bullish yun, uh, sorry, bearish yung term for uh, falling stocks. And yeah, no, the way the bear closed down, no, uh, similar siya to how prices decreased during this session. 
Now again, no, uh, to represent the price action, let's draw the candlestick. Now again, from the open to the close. Now that's how you draw the body. Now, so when you draw the body from the open to the close, mapapansin nyo po that the body of the candlestick right now is actually red. Now, bakit red po siya? Because the closing price is lower than the opening price. So, napapansin nyo, no? yung closing price, mas mababa po siya sa opening price. So, in essence, bumaba yung presyo for the whole day. Okay? Now, when you see this, no? yung complete red body lang na candlestick, ang tawag po dito is still marubozu, pero it's already bearish marubozu. And when you see this, this may signal a continuation to the downside. Kasi, for example, first time that happened, then others, other investors might not have been uh, ano, uh, paying attention to their portfolio. Pakita nila dito and they find that to be quite risky. Baka next day, uh, bibentahan pa din nila. Uh, yung medyo late sila into the action. Okay? Now, yung stock market po no, has always been a battleground between your bulls and the bears. No? And dyan always yan. Either the bulls win or the bears win. So again, that's buyers versus your sellers. Uh, some days, no, uh, panalo yung bulls, no, green yung candlestick. Paminsan the bears overpower, kaya red yung candlestick body. Pero there are actually days, no, na yung mga days din talaga that they end in a drop, no, tabla sila. <laughs> And uh, I'll show you this scenario of such a trading day. So it opened at this price level. Okay, there you go. Then early in the morning session, pansin niyo po the bulls push it to this high price. no? Mangat siya to that price. Then the bears emerge. Kasi bakit natin alam that the bears emerge? Kasi bumaba yung presyo. It pulled it back to this low price. Okay, I want to emphasize this. no? So during that time, ang makikita niyo po sa candle niya, if you look at the dynamic chart niya, it's, syempre, it's a green body. But uh, the market is still open. no? So, that will still move. And let's say it pulled back to this low price. No? So, maging red naman siya kasi during that time, mas mababa yung uh, current price to the opening price. So, red yung makikita ninyo. Now, after going to that low price, uh, bumalik yung bulls. No? Paano natin nalaman? Because umangat yung presyo. So, sa afternoon, na na-regain ng control yung bulls and Uh, it closed at this opening price. So, yan. Essentially, nag-close siya around the opening price. And when you see this, na yung medyo ganun yung form niya, no? meron kang thin body, uh, virtually paminsan wala siyang body, tapos meron siyang high price and low price, ang tawag po dito is your doji. No? Doji po tawag dyan. So, in this price action, neither bulls nor bears Uh, we're able to take control of the session. So in this case, we can say that there's actually indecision or draw sila during that day. Kasi nga, early into the session, panalo yung bulls. Pero nag-emerge yung bears, binagsakan yung presyo to that low price. But na nag-recover din naman yung bulls. And it also closed virtually at the opening price. Yeah. So, tabla. No? <laughs> And there are days that you see that. And when you see that candlestick pattern, again, ha, hindi po necessary din na flat talaga yun siya, no? Virtually close yung opening and closing price. So, essentially, pag medyo manipis yung body niya, tapos meron kang tinatawag natin na weeks, no? By the way, uh, ito pong nakikita niyo dito na high and low price na nag-visit niya. Tawag po dyan is week. ba diba? Doon sa kandila po natin, may body siya, tapos meron din tayo yung thread. Na yung thread, yun po yung biniber natin para uh, iilaw yung kandila. But uh, in technical analysis terms, uh, that is your week. No? Week naman din tawag. Yan. And uh, yung nakikita nyo ng mga outliers na high and low prices, weeks po ang tawag dyan. Okay? So, ayan. I hope that gave you insight na, na mas madaling maintindihan yung mga candlesticks na nakikita nyo sa chart from time to time. And here's a quick recap of the basic candlesticks na we have discussed. No? So una po is the bullish marubozu. So dito po yung price action was driven by the buyers. And nag-advance po siya and closed higher. 
Now, second was the bearish Marubozu. So, dito po yung price action was driven by the sellers. So, nag-decline siya. And of course, it closed lower. Now, lastly is the Doji. No? So, dito, neither the buyers nor the sellers, they were neither were in control of the session. So, it opened and closed at virtually equal levels. And these are just your basic candlesticks. No? Uh, basic lang po talaga siya. And marami pa pong candlestick patterns out there that can help you understand price action better. So we have uh, the likes of the hammer, hanging man, piercing line, dark cloud cover, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, morning star, and evening, evening star. No? So these are actually two to three candlestick patterns that you see from time to time. No? And uh, yun, unfortunately, we don't have the time to discuss each of these no? kasi... Uh, sa candlesticks pa lang po, isang session na siya. But we want this to be as comprehensive as possible. So uh, I just want to leave you know that these patterns are very helpful, lalo na po pag nakikita natin siya around the support and resistance zones. Uh, we'll discuss about those zones in a bit. No? But pag nakikita nyo pong itong mga patterns na to around those areas, they can be an early sign of a reversal signal. Okay, but uh, I'll give this to you as an assignment, no? uh, advantage to for those of existing first MetroSec account, because you can actually learn about these for free. So all you need to do is just to log into uh, your first MetroSec investment account. So just go to chart. Maybe I can pull up my laser pointer. Uh, you can go to chart. Tapos punta po kayo sa chart pattern recognition. And meron pong tab dito na learn technical analysis. So maganda po dito is internationally renowned na guru like si Martin Frey, siya po magtuturo sa inyo uh, about these candlestick patterns. You, you see here, no? Uh, hammers, hanging men, dark cloud covers. Ito po yung binangkit kanina sa previous slide. And the beauty of this is that you can actually study this on demand. So online lang din po siya as long as you have access sa first MetroSec account niyo and libre po siya. And as you can see, you don't have to do it in one sitting as well kasi modular siya. Pwede nyo pong araw-arawin or every weekend nyo lang, no? You try to finish one or two modules at, uh, at your convenient time. And when you look at your times dito, paminsan, it would take just 12 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, no? But uh, nothing longer than 30 minutes for each of the modules. So ano talaga, no? Yung tipong we get to learn at our own pace. Now, maganda pa po dito is that you can check your understanding after every session. So, kasi meron pong mga quizzes here. Okay, so uh, for this assignment ko na lang po, no? Siyempre, advantage po dito those who have first metrosic account kasi libre po to for you. Now, to move to our next uh, part of the discussion, uh, as we learn more about charting, no? Uh, there are actually things that uh, maganda to embody. No? And that is actually your three core beliefs of technical analysis. So I'm going to go through them quickly, no? but we're going to discuss them in detail after this slide. So una, market price discounts everything. Second, price moves in trends. And third, history repeats itself. Now, let's try to explore each of these core beliefs. No? So una is your price moves, uh, sorry, your market price discounts everything. So this is the simple way to put it, no? but for those who are studying finance, no? uh, this is essentially your efficient market hypothesis. Now, if you believe in this, no? that the market is efficient, it says no? this core belief is telling us that all, no? again, all relevant information, uh, be it growth prospects ng kumpanya, uh, be it profitability trend niya, yung competence ng management, uh, yung competitive advantage or yung moat ng business, lahat niyan, no? uh, among other factors pa, lahat ng factors na yun are all reflected in the stock price. Okay? So, ibig po sabihin niyan, market price reflects the sum knowledge of all market participants. No? And that is your uh, first core belief, which is market price discounts everything. Uh, so, lahat niyan, no? all of the information, lahat ng disclosures na release nila, 
the first core belief of technical analysis telling us all of those are actually priced in doon sa stock price ngayon. Okay? So that's the first. Yung second core belief naman ng technical analysis is price moves in trends. Now, as you can see from the chart, no, uh, the market went through a period of sideways indecision. No? Parang ganito lang. Indecisive siya. Again, we're not talking about a single candlestick right now. No, we are alam na natin how those candlesticks are formed. But through time, no, tawag dito is time series. Kasi we see the candlesticks form through time. And itong first na nakikita natin is a sideways indecision. So kasi it's just ranging here. Now, after that, it went through an upward momentum. No, halata naman, no? that's up. Pataas talaga siya. And after some time, no, uh, nag-decline din siya. And syempre, that happens when there is a sell-off. Now, uh, this is behavioral finance already, no? but just to give you a brief na connection from that, this happens no yung cycles ng yung cycles ng stock price it happens because yung mga investors they go through emotions no so you see here no na they go from optimism to excitement thrill and euphoria no and yun paminsan pa nga diba that uh, people paminsan more people buy in na nasa mataas na yung presyo niya no uh, we have tons of experience of that no siguro na na experience niya rin noon di ba but uh, pag umaangat yung presyo no it actually increases your financial risk lalo na po pag euphoric yung lahat ng tao parang sobrang saya nila sa stock na yun no that's actually the point of maximum financial risk kasi nga likely no marami ng taong bumibili noon Diba? Now, from that, no, they, paminsan, nagda-die down yung excitement. Uh, it goes to fear, to panic, to depression. Diba? So, uh, paminsan, no, it's because, ano siya, due to many circumstances, na pangit yung outlook, or yung pagka-pandemic, I think all of us experience that. No? Now, unfortunately, no, when this happens, uh, baliktad yung nagagawa ng mga tao kung pag Ah, uh, ano no, this is due to behavioral biases natin no na paminsan people buy at the maximum point of financial risk where in euphoric lahat no. Tapos pag nag-pull back yung presyo, uh, you tell yourself no na parang denial stage ka pa kasi ah, this is just a pullback and I'm a long-term investor so this is okay. Pero paminsan hindi sila nakakapag-cut loss no. Later I'll be discussing that as well no, yung importance of cutting your losses for short-term trades. No? Again, we're talking about short-term trading strategy here. Now, problema pag hindi ka pa nakapag-cut loss at uh, very ano pa, reasonable na loss levels, paminsan bumabagsak yung presyo. No? And nahihirapan ka na magbenta at very low prices. No? Paminsan pa nga, no? uh, sobrang sakit na, na doon ka, ka pa pati nagbebenta sa point of maximum financial opportunity na kung kailan pa sobrang depressed ng prices, doon ka pa nagbebenta. And in general, baliktad dapat eh, na yung tipong kung saan yung uh, point of maximum financial opportunity, usually pag depressed yung market, that should be the time that we should be buying. Because again, we buy low and we sell high. No? So uh, again, <laughs> uh, medyo nag-spin off ako konti, no? that's already behavioral uh, biases. No? Hopefully, uh, throughout the year, no it's a uh, Medyo special na webinar namin but uh, uh, I have a presentation on decoding the investor's mind. no And I'm going to teach there how to overcome uh, yung mga behavioral biases natin which is unfortunately innate siya sa atin. No? But if you are aware of it, medyo mas ma-avoid mo siya if you acknowledge that you are in that state. Okay? So that will be for a different session already. But uh, going back, no, there are actually three primary trends lang po, no, uh, that shows the general direction at which the stock market is headed. No? So first is your sideways trend. So dito po, hindi po umaangat or bumababa yung stock below a certain price range. So sideways lang po siya. Now, meron din pong uptrend. No? So dito, yung stock price, it forms higher highs and higher lows. Now, on the other end, no, syempre kung may uptrend, meron din downtrend. So in general, uh, you see that if it's creating lower highs and lower lows. Now, 
uh, this is very general lang na ano no but uh, we'll go in depth no how do you actually identify an uptrend from an uptrend okay now let's look at first example natin you can see here no uh, here i'm just trying to show to you no how candlesticks form in a time series no kumbaga kanina natutunan natin how each of these are formed but this is how it progresses no so mapapansin niyo it starts to rise and fall di ba and you might have observed no na merong price level or zone na the stock it does not fall further from that no papansin niyo to to na highlight ko uh, in this region no that happens if there's strong demand and if there's strong demand buying is strong and that's preventing prices from falling further syempre kung binibili siya at those no price levels hindi bababa yung presyo lower than that because there's strong demand and when you see that and you identify that we call this your support level so pag nakikita niyo yan sa new support level ito po yung ibig sabihin niya now let's go to the other side no mapapansin niyo meron din pong mga price level kung saan hindi na rin po umaangat yung stock price so in this region po no meron pong strong supply because selling is strong no uh, of course hindi aangat yung presyo if at that price levels binibenta siya no mas ma mas mas malakas yung pagbebenta kaysa pagbibili di ba so uh, selling is strong in that region and when you identify that no ang tawag po dito is your resistance level okay resistance level po yan now during a sideways trend no yung market participants po again no indecisive sila di ba kanina meron tayong indecisive na candlestick pattern pero meron din po tayong trend na indecisive siya now that's the purpose bakit i took you through the steps no how one candlestick is formed how that progresses with time and even those with time progressions paminsan na identify natin that indecisive ang market so as you can see willing sila to buy uh, at a lower or higher price. And uh, malalaman mo lang po if aangat na siya if the support and resistance level starts to slope up. Okay? So again, dito yung slope ng support and resistance level mo is actually horizontal. So sideways, indecisive. Now, here's another example. No? So now you see, no? medyo mabilis na yung progression kasi syempre you know that from the previous slide already. Now, mapapansin nyo po, no, meron pa rin pong mga price zone wherein the stock does not fall further. Hindi siya bumababa around that zone, di ba? So, alam po natin no, from our previous slide, ang tawag po dito is your support zone. So, in this case po, yung support zone mo, hindi na po siya horizontal. But it's actually sloping upwards. On the other side naman po, meron naman po tayong price zone na hindi na rin umaangat yung presyo higher than that zone. And from our previous slide, ang tawag ko dito is your resistance zone. Uh, but in this case, similar to your support, hindi na rin po siya horizontal. It's actually also sloping upwards. Now, pag yung support and resistance zones mo are sloping up, alam po natin that the stock is bullish and uptrending. Okay? And for us to be profitable, no? Uh, for now, we can only go long sa stock market no, dito sa Philippines. It will be best no, to trade stocks that are uptrending. Kasi alam natin that the market or the participants are on our side. No? Kasi nga, buying yung uh, direction niya. Okay? Now, here's our last example for price trends. No? So as you might have observed, uh, meron pa rin po mga price zone dito na hindi na rin po bumababa yung presyo further. Okay, that's what you see there. Uh, alam po natin, this is your support zone. And in this case, yung support zone natin, hindi na po siya sloping upwards. But it's actually sloping downwards. Now, on the other side naman po, meron naman din mga price zone dyan na uh, hindi po umaangat na yung presyo higher than that zone. And again, we know this is your resistance zone. And it's also sloping downwards. So, pag yung support and resistance zones natin are sloping down, alam po natin that the stock is bearish ang sentiment niya and downtrending siya. So, for us to be profitable, 
it's best no to avoid stocks that are downtrending. Now, alam ko po no, meron po mga traders as well there that they would tell na pwede ka naman kikita dito if you are able to buy at support, sell at resistance, but you have to acknowledge the risk no that the the market no the participants are not on your side no kumbaga mas mabigat yung pagbebenta kaysa pamimili at higher prices so even though you can actually trade this no and profit from it but you have to acknowledge you are taking on higher risk because the market is not on your side no kasi selling siya sellers market siya di ba Okay, now, yun lang, no? mga ano lang, uh, nuggets of wisdom, kumbaga. Okay, now we know how to identify price trends. And this is very important no, sa technical analysis because we need to know the trend. No? Kasi in general, no, ito po yung uh, one of the key takeaways ko for tonight. No? That the trend is our friend. Kaya importante na malaman natin ano yung trend ng stock na papasukan natin. Because the trend will tell us the general sentiment for that stock. And it will be prudent no, to never trade against it. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, no, pag umaakyat yung uh, stock price, higher high, higher low, uh, uptrending siya, sloping upwards ang support and resistance, uh, you can go long. You can buy low and you sell high. Pero pag downtrending po yung stock, uh, avoid. no, You avoid those downtrending. Kasi nga, the trend is your friend never trade against it uh, though no uh, you might be able to profit but again you're taking on more risk than necessary no acknowledge natin na wala naman kami control if you really push through no but yun acknowledge you're taking on more risk diba now yung trend naman po no alam na natin paano mag-identify and the second core belief of technical analysis is telling us that prices moves in trends Pero yung trend na po na yun, hindi po yun siya forever. <laughs> wala pong forever. Kahit sa stocks, wala pong forever. No? Kasi prices moves in trends until it manifests otherwise. No? So, may mga times po na nag-change yung sentiment. Like for example, this from sideways. no uh, May times na binasag niya po yung resistance. na To a point na because of that breakout no? from resistance, it signaled a different price trend which naging uptrend siya. Now, itong uptrend na to hindi rin po forever kasi when times na expected sana siya na mag-bounce siya from support, uh, nabasag naman po yung support na tawag dito is breakdown. No? Breakdown siya. And that breakdown triggered this downtrend. Okay, so prices moves in trends until it manifests otherwise. So, hindi po forever yun ha. So, kaya it's important to identify your support and resistance zones. Kasi those support and resistance zones can actually tell us if meron na pong change in sentiment. Now, let's go to the last core belief of technical analysis that is simply, no, history repeating itself. Akala natin sa life lang to, no, but uh, history does repeat itself as well sa stocks. Kasi marami pong instances that we can observe na tawag po dito is role reversal. No? Wherein, di ba, yung nalaman na po natin yung support and resistance. Paminsan po, again, it changes. No? Paminsan may change in sentiments na paminsan what used to be support will now be resistance. What used to be resistance, paminsan it would now be your support. No? So for example, uh, ito, this is explain uh, this sample no, na there seem to be a resistance at 7350 pero uh, once nag break out yan siya it made another high yan na, yan na rin yung nang, naging bagong resistance niya and may times that this no this 7350 became a support no may may few instances here that it became support so we see that uh, re uh role reversals no na yan no bumalik naman siya no when it breached below naman it became resistance ulit no Then, pag breakout naman, binalikan niya rin, no? <laughs> nag-rally siya towards the previous high niya rin, which is 8-1. No? So, naging resistance siya. So, we see that pattern all throughout. no Kaya, it's very important to know your support and resistance zones because there are times that history repeats itself. Okay? So, yan lang po yung point ng third uh, 
core belief of technical analysis. So just to recap po, no? so first, price, market price discounts everything. Second, price moves in trends until it manifests otherwise. And third, history repeats itself. So maganda po if we acknowledge no, and we understand those three core beliefs because if we embody these beliefs, we can make the most of our arsenal when it comes to technical analysis. Okay? Now, let's say, no, meron po tayong ganitong price action and it looks like this. no. So, this is me trying to summarize things up. No? Kasi uh, next slide po dito is your activity, na interactive activity. And let's see, yung nakita natin na price action, ganito na po siya. So again, yung first na gagawin talaga natin when we see a price action is to identify the price trend. Again po ha, first thing to do, identify price trend. And again, we can do this by drawing your support and resistance zones. No? And in this case, yung support and resistance zones mo, you would agree with me that it's actually sloping upwards. So alam po natin that the stock is actually uptrending. Okay? Now, nakikita rin po natin dito that the recent price action shows us na nag-bounce from support. So, parang solidifying the fact na buyers talaga yung nandito na zone na to kasi nag-bounce siya. Now, uh, if you were to decide, na siguro ito first interaction ko sa inyo, I've been talking for quite some time na, if you were to decide, uh, uptrending na yung stock, uh, would you buy this stock already? Can you please chat? No? Uh, ganito yung price trend, bounce from support. Uh, I, I We know this is an uptrend, bounce from support. Would you buy the stock? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I, I thought I lost you, no? I'm happy that you're still there. <laughs> okay. No, and most of you said yes, no? Which is correct. No? You are correct. Uh, some of you said wait for a test. Uh, but I think this line is already tested. No? Kasi I think this is the third time na na-test niya tong support level. Now, some of you said yes, no, which is tama naman considering that it's uptrending tapos nag-bounce off na siya from support. However, if I may ask you, are we sure that the stock will retest? Now, if history would repeat itself, no, we are assuming that the stock will retest the resistance zone. Kasi di ba? If history repeats itself, then possible, isang possibility is that this retest the resistance so but if i may ask you are we sure now are we sure that it will retest the resistance zone yes or no yeah and i know you have experience in market kasi sabi nyo ah uh, no no some of you are saying we'll encourage someone to buy because i'm saying grabe naman po kayo sa <laughs> uh, wag naman ganun <laughs> okay uh no no so in general no no hindi tayo sure if aangat siya again balik tayo dun sa definition ng technical analysis now we're trying to study and understand historical price action in order to find hints into where the price may probably be headed and probably no if history repeats itself pwede nga siya babalik to resistance pero hindi yan sure no because there's still a possibility that it will revisit the support zone. Pwede naman talaga siya babalik to the support, no? Pwede naman. We don't know where the stock price will go. So, worse pa talaga niyan, not only mag-pull back siya to support, but pwede din siyang mag-break below the support and indicating a change in sentiment. Now, to quantify itong possibilities na to na probable siya umangat, probable din siya bumaba, then uh, it will be prudent na bago tayo bumili, it's good to calculate your risk to reward ratio. Now, yung recommended risk to reward, reward ratio ko is 1 is to 3. So, ibig po sabihin ito, uh, you only consider to enter trades na may potential reward na thrice as big as the potential risk. Okay? So, but again, that's a personal thing that I'd like to impart to you. Some people comfortable na sila sa 1 is to 2. Uh, for me, sagad na yung 1 is to 2, no? but some people really risk takers, okay sa kanila 1 is to 1. But for me, no? I'd rather to in I'd rather increase my uh, probability na yung potential reward ko mas malaki kaysa sa risk ko. No? So it depends on you. But for starters, you can go for 1 is to 3. Okay? Now, 
let's now uh, let's try to apply what we have learned so far okay so ito na yung sinasabi ko activity sa inyo and i believe we still have time naman so ito uh, i'd like to encourage you know to be interactive at this point <laughs> okay so let's say we see this price chart ano po yung unang gagawin natin no what should we do no to know if we should consider to buy or consider what position we will take on that stock yeah sige what should you do first no nasabi ko na nabanggit ko na sa previous discussion you need to identify the trend ayan ba ko paulit-ulit na lang yan no <laughs> identify the trend and for you to identify your trend you need to determine your correct no you need to determine you need to draw support and resistance so ito po yung na-draw niyo na support bakit because nakikita, nakita niyo that dalawang beses na siya nag-bounce yung stock from that and this is already higher low so which is your first no first sign of a potential of trend then you draw your resistance paano mo malaman yung resistance saan siya nauuntog and you see that to be around this level no so untog ka diyan untog ka diyan and those are two points already no so pwede ka na mag-draw ng line no uh, for you to draw a line no <laughs> balik tayo sa geometry natin uh, the minimum number of points to draw a line is two points no so these are two points already so draw your line okay duhitan mo na okay <laughs> So, but this is already signifying higher high, higher low. But are we sure na this will track this? That we have yet to know. <laughs> okay, so if I were to ask you, ganito yung, ano, no? ganito yung price action. Nang galing siya sa resistance, you see this candlestick. Okay? This candlestick, is this bullish or is this bearish? Yes, that's a resounding bearish. <laughs> bearish talaga, pulang-pula. So, considering nang gagaling siya sa resistance, no? Uh, ano yung ano ninyo? What would you do? Would you buy this stock or would you do nothing? Again na, wala pa tayong position so we cannot sell anything. So, assuming wala pa tayong position on this stock, would you buy this stock already or would you do nothing? Yes, uh, you are correct. No, wait, wait, wait. For... Yes, and some of you, <laughs> fund account muna. <laughs> okay, so tama, no? Uh, do nothing, wait tayo. Because no, if history repeats itself, assuming, no? Selling dito, baka, no? Isang possibility niya is pwede siya bumalik to support. Okay, sige. So do nothing, no? Most of us agree. This is what happened next. I want you to watch, no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what happened next. Okay? Now, you see this. Now, you see this chart. Uh, higher high, higher low, still within that uptrend. Now, nakita nyo, what, itong candlestick na to, can you chat, is this bullish, is this bearish? Itong candlestick, itong recent. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. That is bullish. Now, definitely bullish because it's actually green. So, it's been higher ang closing price kasi opening price, which is quite a positive kasi nga nag-bounce from support. Now, if I will ask you, what would you do right now? Would you buy or do nothing? Ayan, ang dami. <laughs> ang dami nang sasabing buy. Okay, but should we buy na agad? Uh, I think you're forgetting our previous slide. Would you buy na ba agad? Or baka, ano, when you say buy, that is telling me that you are optimistic that, no? You're optimistic na aangat siya to resistance zone. But again, yung question ko sa previous slide, are you sure na aangat siya sa resistance zone? The answer to that is no. Kaya we need to calculate your risk to reward. In this case, yung risk mo kung bababa siya to support, that's 2%. If your reward, no, if angat siya to resistance, that is around 14% na potential reward. So in this case, uh, risk to reward mo is 1 to 7. Now, with this knowledge, no, uptrending, bounce from support, risk to reward ratio, no, 1 is to 7, what would you do right now? Would you buy or do nothing?
Yes, I would agree. No? If I was on this trade as well, I would buy it. Uh, let's say nabili natin siya at 17.4, December 12th. No? Now, after buying, no? I think all, all of us bought, di ba? After buying, this is what happened next. And I want you to observe carefully. Okay, can you share sa chat box? How do you feel with that result? <laughs> okay, okay. So may nagsasabi sa inyo na okay lang. Some of you are saying sad. Some of you are saying mistake. No, But uh, is it really a mistake? Is that a really mistake? Have we not factored that in before we went into the trade? Di ba ito yung 2% na ini-expect natin because nakalculate na natin yung risk no? na possible? And yeah, tama yung nasabi dito, no? as long as still on support, it's okay. Okay? So again, no, wag kayo kabahan <laughs> na you already acknowledged this beforehand. This is your risk. Pati importante dito, hindi pa po siya tumagos. No? <laughs> hindi na po siya tumagos sa support. Because if tumagos na siya support, nag-breakdown na po siya, then, then wala. That negates this support level. Then siguro pag ganun, benta ka na. No? But since nasa support level pa siya, that's okay. Okay? And I don't think this warrants a cut loss agad na sobrang onte pa lang. Probably less than 2% yan siya. Okay? So I think most of us no, held onto this stock. And this is what happened next. I want you to observe closely. Yeah. Now, how do you feel right now? Ah, did you guys see it ba? <laughs> did you see it ba? <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> Natutuwa ako sa mga ano niyo. <laughs> sa mga reactions niyo, no? Grabe, may iba magte-take profit na ba? <laughs> uh, if you're okay with these profits, then go ahead. No? But again, the things have not played out yet, no? Kasi uh, if you're going to take profit, siguro a little bit, but your expectation, di ba, na angat siya to resistance, then hindi pa naman na-break yung support. So, that is still in play. Yung iba relieved, no? <laughs> so, ibig sabihin nun kinabahan. <laughs> okay. Yan. Tama yung sabi ni ng isang attendee. Dead ma muna, tipan makaka TP. And your TP is your resistance. Yan. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, uh, yung iba nagkaka-anxiety na daw. No? So, again, the intent of this activity, no? we're going to take time dito, but my intent here is for you to really experience ano yung actual trade. No? <laughs> Panic attacks daw. <laughs> Relax muna kayo. Sa <laughs> Sana hindi kayo nagkape before this. <laughs> okay, sige. Alright, so I think uh, no one naman nagbenta. No? So we're good. No, we're still good. And this is what happened next. I want you to observe carefully. Okay, sige. How do you feel? No? Pumunta ba siya doon sa expected natin? Did it go where we where it where where we expect it to be? <laughs> Grabe. Yung mga comments yung parang nagbabago no, nagkaka anxiety, heart attack. No, no, no. So, hindi siya pumunta sa expectation natin. But for this, would you syempre, hindi, hindi nga pumunta sa expectation natin. What would you do? Would you sell already? Would you sell or hold muna? <laughs> lecture pa lang daw pinagpapawisan <laughs> paano pag may nakat ano na actual trade <laughs> okay so you're correct no hold muna kasi it's still holding the trend no hindi pa nabasag yung trend so i think good to hold as well so kung ako nandito uh, hold muna no then this is what happened next all right sige nga how do you feel right now <laughs> Yahoo, hooray, TP na. <laughs> fly baby, fly party. <laughs> pa cheeseburger. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So, yun no? Now, pumunta siya to where we expected it. Now, this is already, no? Uh, up, around our resistance zone. So, if I were to ask you, no? What would you do right now? Would you 
hold muna or would you sell already? Okay, two choices lang. Yeah, napaka-discipline naman ng mga attendees natin tonight. <laughs> sell. And I agree with you, no? I agree with you to really sell, no? Kasi, uh, again, if history repeats itself, alam natin ng dynamics ng resistance, mas maraming sellers kumpara sa buyers. So the probability of this uh, to go down, mas mataas kaysa probability na aangat pa siya. Okay? So January 25 after three weeks no baka hindi lang kayo nagletsyon nung nung Christmas pero after January 25 no may pang ano na kayo Valentine's Day no up ng 18% yung position niyo. Okay? So sell tayo no so wala na tayong hawak ngayon. And this is what happened next. Okay? I want you to observe and I want to see your comments after this. Sige, how do you feel? <laughs> sa wi. <laughs> Sabi dito na may nagsasabi sa wi, no. I mean, some of them are commenting direct to host or panelist. So, hindi niyo nakikita. But uh, 'yun, may nagsasabi sa wi, break out, ouch, pero okay lang. Yeah, no. So, I like your mindset, no, na uh ano no, sayang opportunity pero it's okay because we just followed our plan. No? And it's okay, no? Uh, swerte lang na nag-break out siya. But you shouldn't feel down, no? Or you shouldn't feel, no? You have to be careful with this, no? Tawag dito is FOMO, no? FOMO or fear of missing out, no? Na pag nakita niyo, oy sayang, no? What people do here is usually pag nakikita nila ito, hinahabol nila yung presyo, no? And okay, if it plays out na mag-continue siya to another trend, but again, you're coming here from uh, from an uptrend, no? So, Uh, there's still risk, no? And this is what happened next. Okay. Yeah, no? So, yeah, no? So, again, uh, don't feel bad na umangat siya, no? So, you would have earned more, no? Because, uh, di ba? Two emotions that control people, that's fear and greed. And pag nakikita mo to, no? <laughs> Tapos nag ka and this happened. Yan. So, yun. <laughs> uh, sayang. No? Sayang siya. So, again, stick to the plan and like what, what happened here, no? na bumaba yung presyo. If you come to think about it, no? hindi na siya umangat higher than that. No? It reached higher price levels pero wala. Hindi siya nagsara to those levels. So, hanggang doon lang talaga siya. Nauntog na siya. So, again, siguro that played out because of this scenario. But, uh, we have to acknowledge na mas malaki talaga yung probability na mabebentahan ka kasi nga, you are around the resistance zone. Okay. Now, this is what happened next. Now, what would you do? Okay? What would you do? Would you buy na? Uptrend siya. Tapos, nag-bounce from support. This is bullish candle. Would you buy already? Okay? Parang excited ulit. Kayo na, no? nakalimutan yung kakasabi ko lang. Again, no. Uh, before you buy, uh, calculate your risk to reward. Okay, calculate your risk to reward. And in this case, your risk is three percent. Your potential reward is ten point five percent. So that's a risk to reward ratio of one is to three point five. And based po dun sa pinag-usapan natin kanina, uh, pasok pa naman siya dun sa one is to three. So I would have bought as well, no? Dito, no. But again, before bibilhin. Identify your risk to reward ratio. So Feb 19, no, uh, 1920, and this is what happened next. Okay, so how do you feel right now? Sa don sa mga bumile. Okay, happy, no, happy, nice, no. And again, de ba? This played out faster than when this played out. No, I hope. Na, ano niyo, na na kita niyo yun, di ba? Na nag-play out itong trading plan niyo faster than this. And this is, ano, this is, it happens, no? Again, di natin alam kung when they would play out. Kaya alam, we should cover both bases. Okay, now, if I may ask you, this is the candlestick nasa around resistance zone. What would you do? Would you sell or do nothing? 
Okay. I'm happy to see na marami nagsisell. Pero some people are saying hold muna. And this is what happened next. No? Okay. So that's what happened next. Ako, if I were in that position, I would sell. Kasi, di ba, you're coming off from a resistant zone. Tapos you have here a... Uh, you have here a bearish candlestick. So, alam mo, may sellers na talaga. No? So, I would have sold, no? Okay na rin. 10.94% gain in a uh, week or so. No? So, I think I'm happy with that, no? Siguro lang you're holding because nga, you are from your recent, no? Tawag dito recency bias. Kasi recently, no, you attempted, no? Some of you said trim or sell half, no? Uh, siguro because of the recency bias na I previously ano, I'll keep some position muna kasi baka aangat siya and again, you have to follow your trading plan okay, and this is what happened next now, uh, if I were to ask you no, pag ganito yung situation, uptrend, bounce from support, what would you do right now? would you buy or do nothing? Okay. Yes, na tama no calculate muna, always calculate, diba? So calculate this, risk mo is 5.5%, your reward is 7.5. So your risk to reward ratio is 1 is to 1.3. Hindi siya pasok doon sa ating 1 is to 3 na suggestion. So ako, if I was in this trade, I would not take this. Okay, and this is what happened next. Ako ha, I wouldn't have entered this trade. And this is what happened next. Okay, so how do you feel? Yung wala, you did not take part of that. Okay, so some of the people, uh, some people would feel na sayang to. Kasi sayang naman, no? kung binili ko sana to, I would have profited. no. But again, you should not feel that way. Kasi nga, yes, you are correct. no. Follow your trading plan. Again, plan your trades and trade your plan. If hindi pa po siya pasok sa trading plan nyo, that's okay. No, That shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't feel, no? even though as human, no, nasasayangan tayo, pero okay yan kasi umangat siya. Pero what if bumagsak yan? Edi, you entered a trade acknowledging that you're taking on more risk than the potential reward that you can get. Diba? So, diba? So, ayan, uh, yan lang. yun yung point ko. <laughs> and I hope, no, did you enjoy ba the no, activity? <laughs> so, I hope, no, mas mar marami kayo na internalize with this, no, and I understand, no, we took a little bit of time here, but I hope uh, uh, maganda to. So, may nagtatanong na anong stock yan, no? So, <laughs> andito po sa taas. <laughs> ayan, so this is M-wide noon. So, way back 2017. So, hindi na lang po siya na-update kasi syempre, I hope you see the effort ng paggawa ng no? <laughs> animations for uh, crafting this out. No? So, I hope, <laughs> irregardless na hindi po siya masyado uh, updated, but the the principles are everything. <laughs> so, ayan. And I next, no uh, after that, no uh, I just want to quick, quickly share with you another way to help manage your risk no whenever you enter a trade. Uh, ang tawag po dito is position sizing. So for example, meron po tayong 100,000 pesos na tradable funds. So yung una po natin i-determine is your account risk. No? So the, yung rule of thumb talaga is to never risk more than 2% of your total cash in a single trade. Kasi pag 2% yung maximum risk natin per trade, ibig sabihin yan, we have 50 trades na pwede. Okay? So... Uh, in this case, no, kung 100,000 yung pera natin, 2% of that is 2,000 pesos. Now, second step po natin is to determine trade risk. Hindi lang account risk but also trade risk. So, yung trade risk, depende po yan siya sa risk appetite ninyo. Ikaw naman po mag-set kung ano yung preferred na percentage stop loss mo. So, for this discussion lang, let's set a loose na 10% loss per position. So, to calculate for your proper position size, now, when you say position size, ito po yung tamang amount that you are going to put in in a single trade. No? So, you need to calculate that by dividing your account risk by your trade risk. So, for example, di ba, account risk mo is 2%, that's 2,000 pesos. 
Uh, tapos gusto mo na preferred stock loss level mo is 10%. So 2,000 divided by 10% that is uh, 20,000 pesos. So ibig sabihin niyan maximum na per position mo is 20,000 pesos. And when you do that, no, uh, ibig sabihin niyan since you have 100,000, you know no, how much yung limit mo sa maximum number of trades. So 20,000 per open position, ibig sabihin niyan 5 open trades at a time lang. Kasi 20, 20, 20, that's 5 open positions. Tapos every time you have a position, uh, since you set a 10% na stop loss, maximum loss mo is just 2%. So since pag ganun yung setup mo, 5 open trades at a time, 2% maximum loss per position, ibig sabihin niyan, kaya mo ng 50 consecutive na losses before ka wipe out. But again, if you just follow the trading plan, uh, find means and ways to make the trade you know, higher yung probability on your end to have the reward and the risk you took it, then... Uh, yung 15 na consecutive trade, sobrang malas mo na talaga nun. <laughs> okay? Now, after learning about proper position sizing, I can't stress enough yung importance ng cutting your losses early. Now, in order to protect your capital, uh, yung pagka-cut loss is very essential. Again, I'm referring here to uh, short-term trades. And here is why. No? So, if you cut your losses at negative 5%, no? so here, bumaba yung pressure from 100 to 95, that's 5% loss, kailangan mo lang ng 5.3% profit sa next trade mo para maka-break even ka. Pero if you cut losses lower than 10%, no, uh, you will now need 11.1% profit on your next trade para maka-break even ka. Pero if mag-cut loss ka, sabihin natin 50% na, no? sabi ko nga, di ba, paminsan binibili doon sa euphoric stage tapos binibenta doon sa depressed na prices, doon ka pa nagbenta at 50%. So, kailangan mo na ngayon ng 100% gain on your next trade para lang maka-break even ka. So, again, yung point ko lang dito is to cut your losses early. Siguro, medyo loose na yung 10% loss, uh, medyo medium yung... Uh, 8 to 5%, tapos tight na yung 3 to 5% loss. No? So, manage na lang, depende po sa uh, risk profile ninyo. Now, ngayon, with our fast-paced and busy lifestyles, what if wala po tayong time to monitor the market and cut our losses early? So, dito na po pumapasok yung importance and value ng conditional orders namin. Uh, this is important to protect yourself from losses, and this is an advanced level of placing an order. Again, this would give the traders the flexibility and power no, na you can set your conditions na kailangan mo nang masatisfy bago masisend yung buy or sell order ninyo. And it works very simple lang. No? Uh, natitrigger po yung conditional order when it moves to a certain price level. And tawag ko dito are your trigger prices. Okay? Now, uh, itong type of order is actually used to take advantage of, let's say, buy and break out play ka. So, hihintayin mo muna na pupunta siya sa trigger price mo before ka bibili at a certain price. No? So, you can set use stop limit to have your buy and break out place. And again, ito, kahit hindi mo nakamonitor yung market, uh, it will execute it for you. No? As long as ma-reach ma na yung trigger price and your limit price. Now, also, even cutting your losses, no, pwede kang mag-set ng stop limit doon sa, let's say, 10% loss ka. So, that's your limit price, pero trigger mo siya somewhere 8%. Uh, so, I know, no, for those of you who have spent enough time trading the market, ilang beses na tayo nagkaroon ng experience na hindi natin nabantayan yung portfolio natin. Uh, and we have incurred a lot of losses. Now, imagine the power it would bring to you if, you can set it up in advance. Yeah. And di ba, kahit later sa isi-share ng research team namin about the Trader's Playbook Report, uh, it's it already has no uh, buy position levels, uh, take profit levels, and cut loss levels. And no, it's uh, makakatulong talaga siya. No? Uh, meron tayong conditional orders. Now, ang point ko lang dito guys is as a short-term trader, again, ha, I'm not talking as an investor here, as an opportunistic short-term trader, huwag niyo pong pakasalan yung stocks niyo. <laughs> Don't get married to your stocks. 
kung bumaba na po siya by more than what you can tolerate, benta niyo na po and take the loss. Again, you have to acknowledge this as a trader, no? Kasi para magkaroon ka ng net profit sa mga trades mo, sa short-term trader, dapat ma-maximize mo yung profits that you make and you minimize your losses that you incur. Kaya, di ba, we set up yung mga ganun na mga risk mitigation controls natin. Okay? How do we minimize our losses and maximize our profits? I shared to you how to plan your trade and trade your plan. No? So, number one, you need to identify the trend. No? Alam niyo na po yan. Marunong na kayo mag-draw ng support and resistance zones. Uh, you identify your entry and exit points. No, Essentially, pag nag-bounce siya from support, uh, that could be a trigger na pwede niyo siyang tingnan to buy it. Tapos, pag pumunta na siya sa resistance, that can be a trigger for you to sell it already. But uh, we should not make it that easy kasi dapat meron tayong risk management na i-implement. No? So number one that I shared with you tonight is your risk to reward ratio. That is preferably one is to three. Then apply proper position size para hindi naman kayo overweight on a certain stock no? or you are trying to minimize your risk every trade that you are open no? to. And lastly, uh, cut your losses early. Very important. Huwag kayong matigas ng ulo. No? <laughs> no? If the stock is telling you that it's falling, no? don't turn from a short-term trader to an investor. No? Yung tipong, ano na lang tayo. No? <laughs> Pagdadasal na lang natin. No? So again, we have to be logical about these stuff. Lalo na po talaga if we are in it for the short term lang. Now, if you are an active trader, no, you will find our Traders Playbook research report valuable. No, I I hope you will use it to the most, no, of what it can offer you. And we're very grateful and honored, no, that a member of our Equity Research Division joined us this evening, no, beyond office hours already, uh, to discuss paano, in how can the clients no make the most out of our traders playbook research report and give me this opportunity no to introduce no uh, our guest speaker no from our research team we have here mr kyle garcia he is actually an equity research associate for first metro securities and he is a psychology and finance graduate from the ateneo de manila university and he is holding various leadership positions during his stay there. And we actually first met doon no, when I gave a talk doon sa Ateneo Management Economic Society nila. And he actively managed a private portfolio between 2019 to 2023. And yung portfolio na yun, it focused on the local equity and cryptocurrency market before joining First MetroSec. Now, without further ado, let's all welcome our equity research associate, Mr. Kyle Garcia. Go ahead, Kyle. You're on mute, Kyle. Oh, sorry. I'm actually on mute. So, good morning, everyone. Thank you for staying with us until tonight. No? I'm not sure if nakapag-dinner na kayo. But allow me to discuss what our traders playbook is. So, again, th thank you for that amazing presentation, Sir JP. I'm not sure paano ko Tasabayan yun. But okay, let me share my screen. Oh, uh, can I have access to Palaka on how to share them again? Uh, so, sorry, some of the thumb oh, Sorry, yes. Yeah, you can share your screen already. Uh, okay, thanks. So, some of the maybe you can watch while I'm presenting this now. So, yeah, let's get on with the show. So again, um, good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing great. And the trade, let me give a quick background there of our Traders Playbook Report. So the Traders Playbook Report <clears throat> is one of First Metro Securities research reports uh, that help guide clients in making actionable investment or trading decisions, which you can find at the research tab uh, in this section. So. The Traders Playbook Report is curated to help uh, First Metro Security clients generate trading ideas based on fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, with this report, we want to put theory into action. The report is split into four sections. So we have what happened, our view, recommendation, and technical corner. And we'll discuss this even further later. 
So before making a trader's playbook report, we want to make sure that the stock is investable and liquid and should meet at least two of the three criterions in the prior month. So these criterions are public float should at least be 15%, market capitalization should be at least 10 billion, and it should have a 30-day average daily value turnover of at least 10 million. Um, there are some exceptions to these rules. Uh, for example, companies covered by our research, companies included in the MSCI, and companies included included in the investable market indices are also uh, we can also uh, make traders playbook on, a traders playbook on them so a traders playbook is typically released intermittently so meaning for example when we identify a catalyst or a technical pattern forming for a particular stock that's the moment when we are able to create a playbook for however as you all know uh, the market is also seasonal. There are some days that no patterns or news arise. So it is difficult for us to generate ideas. Um, also, uh, once we release a trader's playbook report, um, it expires ar around uh, three months after publishing. So let's move on to the report's content. So first, the first thing you see here is the what happened section. So in this area, um, it usually holds a fundamental or technical recap of what happened to our to a particular stock, which we base our investment decision on. For example, as you can see here, this is a trader's playbook on PLDT. It was just recently released uh, last January 26, so this week long. Um, this is a news flow regarding PLDT Inc. and its digital banking arm, Maya Bank, wherein Maya Bank's depositor count for 2023 has reached over 3 million. So how do we view this bullish bato or can, is this an investable trade idea? So that's when we move on to the R view section. So in this section, we tried to interpret this news flow. Um, and then it also has a technical recap and view. So for the Maya Bank and CLB news flow, we see this as a positive development for the counter. So to summarize the excerpt that we have here, Maya's depositor group, um, Maya's depositor, depositor growth is a welcome development, meaning we see this as actually bullish, and that's why we were able to create a trader's playbook. And sometimes, this is not only the content here. We also have we also link our trader's playbook reports to our company reports, which holds fundamental ideas also for longer-term uh, investors. So in the second paragraph, naman, this is the technical recap of what, we, of what happened and the current technical state of the stock in the spotlight. And we discuss here the technical idea, which we then translate to the recommendation section. So for here, medyo spoon feeding na siya, but um, we should also base this recommendation on your system, di ba? Um, while we do uh, have these ideas, pasok ba siya sa system nyo, or is it actionable for your own um, ideas? So you can find a detailed guide on how to enter exit, and even put a stop loss for the counter. For example, Kaitel, we say here that you should accumulate once it bounces off support and set a stop limit at a particular area and even take profits area also. And then we also put our fundamental call if we have uh, for, the, uh, for the stock and also the potential upside. Next up, we have uh, at the right part, of the trader's playbook is um, a small recap also and some details regarding the stock. For example, uh, we have the market cap here and the last price and also its one-year performance compared to the index. Then next up is the second page, which is the, te which is the technical corner and the summary of our analysis and trading plan. So here we see PLDT moving within a channel and this determines our technical decision for the stock. So our analysis here is that you accumulate on pullbacks for a more uh, favorable risk ratio. As mentioned with Sir JP, Kaina, this is actually the same trend, no? our risk to reward, and even the, the trend that we have, it is moving in a channel. So ultimately, um, Trader's Playbook is actually one of our more digest digestible and straightforward 
um, reports that we have. And yeah, actually, let's look at two more examples that we published in December to help you di uh, digest even more on what types of report we have. So here, we have Converge ICT Solutions Inc. with a ticker Converge and JGS or JG Summit Holdings. So I won't get into the details of um, the content for each trader's playbook, but as a reminder again, yung what happened is just a recap. The R view is how we interpret the recap and also holds the technical viewpoints and the recommendation. So first, our trading plan for Converge was planning to enter once it breaks out of this resistance, so 850. And this is also near the 50 MA. And we have a take profits level at around 978, which is in this area. And a stop loss below 7.82, right? So what happened with Converge? Tumama ba kami? Or uh, did we fail? So let's look at what happened. So remember, we were we released this report once it was here. Dito pa lang. So it went up and it reached our breakout point, meaning, and even our take profit levels. So meaning, our report was kind of right. We were actually on the positive end. So statistically, we were right. And thank you for that. Um, At least we were able to help you guys. And hopefully for you guys, it was within your sex system and it was actionable. However, let's look at another uh, example, naman, which is uh, the JGS uh, playbook report. So here, we were actually seeing a pattern. So some may interpret this as uh, head and shoulders or just within a channel or a, within a consolidation pattern. And that breakout siya, which is, a part, uh, which is within our trading plan. That breakout siya, and we, we don't want to chase. We want it to retest, which is also a part of a strategy that some traders um, use. So once uh, it retests at the 39.30 mark, that's when we try to enter the stock, right? And take profits at around 15% upside. So that's around 45.20, uh, so around this area. So let's, uh, don't forget that RTP is around 45.20, right? So here, umabot ba siya sa TT namin? It actually went up. Um, first, it actually retested. So we were successful in buying this stock. And up to a certain point, we were actually up 10%. No? Uh, however, it didn't reach our target price. So as a reminder, even though we have these trader, um, traders playbook report, it should also be part of your system. While we try to help you guide, um, it's also you who's clicking and uh, who's determining the other points for consideration in terms of your trading style, right? So again, if there's one thing that I can highlight or even emphasize to our audience is that uh, while our trader's playbook report really aims to help you guys make decisions, whether it's long-term or just short-term trading, it is just a guide. And readers uh, should still implement proper risk management and technical strategies according to their system. Um, it's important to acknowledge that trading is still a statistical profession, meaning you lose some and you win some. And it's just uh, depending on your edge that determines your profit profitability, right? So um, we would like to remind that not all trades are 100%. And if you look back at some of our reports, we also have some bad calls, right? But we acknowledge this. We make some good calls and we make some bad calls. But again, it's all, it's all you should trade depending on your system. We're just here to help you generate ideas. And actually, JP, that's all from me. No? Um, the, again, the Trader's Playbook report is very easy to understand. It's just a one-pager with a technical corner on the second page to help our traders visualize even more what the Trader's Playbook is. And yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in and to you also, Sir JP, for giving me the opportunity to present our Playbook report. And if you have questions, I think we have a Q&A after this. So yes, yeah. thank you everyone. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Kyle, no, for that wonderful uh, sharing of our Traders Playbook research report. And yeah, very well put, 
out no na again those are hopefully yung traders playbook can really help you no i think number one is to ano no keep track pa minsan kasi hindi, we don't have time to really monitor for opportunities at least meron kami no we can put out trade ideas to you but uh, as i mentioned no kahit naman sa investment literacy natin when it comes to investing it's personal and more so with trading no kasi magkakaiba tayo ng risk tolerance kaya i taught you about uh the risk management things that you can implement no from uh identifying your trends uh buying at the uh, support identifying your entries and exits because only then can you identify ano ba yung risk to reward ratio mo doon pa lang sa risk to reward ratio you already factor in kung how 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 aggressive or how conservative of an investor you are or a trader you are And yun, hopefully magamit niyo po yung Traders Playbook Report na kasi as mentioned ni Kyle, medyo spoon feeding na siya kasi it will tell you uh, uh, fundamental perspective, ano nangyari sa earnings or recent news about it. Tapos yung analyst namin, they will share to you uh, ano yung ano nila, perspective nila sa ano nangyari. No? So doon pa lang, they will give you two fundamental and technical perspective and another step up recommendation. No? So, pwede nga, no? pag nakabili na kayo ng stock, naka-identify naman doon sa Traders Playbook yung stop loss or yung take profit levels, then you can use our conditional orders to set up like one candles the other. Uh, you have your stop loss and your take profit level. Uh, but again, uh, it's not there to really as yung blindly follow lang, no? Because nakasabi nga doon, recommendation. Kasi kung hindi naman siya fit sa personal trading strategy nyo, then adjust no so that's what i do personally as well adjust based on my personal circumstances all right and in summary no uh ito po yung things that we discussed tonight before we head on to q and i think we have more than enough time pa naman no uh number one, supply and demand drive stock prices no yung interplay niya between supply and demand that will really drive or determine your movement ng stock mo either it goes up or it goes down then yung candlesticks na form siya uh, using your opening price, closing price and high and low prices no so that's why we I, I i shared to you the progression on how those are formed no yung body ng candlestick it's drawn from the open to the closing price tapos yung mga wicks that uh, that shows you your high and low prices for that period and i also shared with you the three core beliefs of technical analysis number one, market price discounts everything Number two, prices moves in trends. Uh, and yeah, no, doesn't stop there, hindi forever until it manifests otherwise. Number three, history repeats itself. Uh, so role reversal, support and resistance levels. And very important, no, whatever be your trading plan is, you plan for it uh, and you trade your plan. And lastly, no, I shared to you yung mga free technical analysis courses and But of course, by Kyle, no, yung Traders Playbook Report. So, I hope, no, uh, and again, it's for free for everyone. Accessible siya. Either you have your classic website, your new website, or your pro website. Uh, free yung ano na yan, reports na yan. And, yan. And with that, let me leave you with this message, no, that the market speaks through its price action. Kung may language yung market, it is the price action. And for us to understand that language, No, we need to really study it, no, and hopefully, no, it can help us earn greater profits. So with that, no, uh, I hope you learned a lot from the session, and uh, we'd like to know how we can improve further, no, your experience in you. So, uh, you can scan this QR code, or when you close this webinar, there are some feedback forms. I hope you uh fill this out, because this is where we know where we did well and what can be improved na so and i'm also inviting everyone no to fall in love with financial wisdom ngayong february 24 no feb ibig naman pala no? and we have upcoming engaging webinars for you whether season investor ka or beginning ka lang sa financial adventure mo meron kaming series na no, that can suit to your needs uh, we have various topics uh, that can enable you to enhance your financial vocabulary And we hope that you get to secure your spot sa mga learning experiences na to. So you can check out our Facebook page you know, for the registration links. And 
as of this moment, no, tapos yun na po yung three-part best series namin. So ngayon, if you want to level up no, your trading game or your investing game, I highly recommend everyone no, to enroll uh, in our Guided Investor Fearless Trader Paid Learning Series, na, which kicks off February 6th. That's already, I guess, next week. No? Next week siya. And it will cover in-depth. No? Kung medyo na, na, ano, naintindihan nyo na yung best series, I challenge you to step it up. No? Uh, if you want to have an in-depth discussion on fundamental analysis and valuation, uh, more in-depth anal technical analysis, and very important, how to build your own trading system. No? So this is very key kasi magkakaiba tayo. And the way we build our trading system depends sa circumstances natin. And feel free to invite us. No? Kung hindi kayo maka-attend sa mga sessions namin, pwede naman kami mag-conduct for you. No? So uh, just uh, let us know. No? Email lang kayo sa amin. Uh, that's marketeducation at firstmetrosec.com.ph And with that, no? uh, we come to the close no? para we have enough time for the Q&A. Uh, let me check the chat at uh, the Q&A section. Yeah, we have uh, tons of questions here. So I guess we have 15 minutes to answer these questions. Uh, here's from anonymous attendee. Uh, I've attended the previous best sessions. Uh, very informative. Thank you so much. Now, where can I access the previous recordings for review? Now, so uh, for this, uh, for now, no, for now, uh, you'll have to email yung customer service namin to request for the link no, for the recordings na no, para ma-review ninyo. Uh, lalo na po pala itong best series namin. No? I forgot to mention this sa mga previous sessions natin but uh, as much as possible yung best series, we encourage that people attend live. No? But uh, yung mga 101 sessions namin, stock market 101, investment funds 101, mutual funds 101, yun uh, depende sa bandwidth ng marketing team namin but uh, they'll probably be able to upload them sa YouTube channel namin. But itong best series, no, uh, we still encourage that you attend live kasi nab nagbabago yung mga examples and uh, we think it's best to experience it if you attend live. No? Para may premium din naman yung mga uh, intermediate courses namin. So yan. And don't worry, uh, ano naman to, uh, free naman siya except for gift, di ba? Ayan, uh, tutorial. No? Some anonymous attendee here. Tutorial on conditional orders. Now, so for this, wala po tayong, I don't know, upcoming pa yung tutorial namin for uh, conditional orders. So for now, I'm going to uh, direct you no, to another resource. Kasi syempre, hindi natin kaya sa oras tonight. No? Baka gutom na kayo. No? So uh, I'm going to share my screen para malaman nyo po yung uh, tutorial namin on conditional orders. Okay, for a while. Uh, share this. All right, let me share my screen. For a while. How do I do that? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Ito, I'll share my ano, our channel. No? So, Tukta lang po kayo sa ano namin, sa First Metro Securities na website. Meron po kaming tutorial doon on conditional orders, how you can set up auto cap loans can buy on breakup. So, yan, I hope I answered your question. Okay. Ito. Uh, next question, paano makuha yung risk to reward? Uh, siguro for this, I will... Uh, give you a walk through ano lang naman risk to reward ratio lang siya no so for a while we have time naman so again no to calculate no yung risk to reward ratio i think you're seeing my screen already punta lang kayo sa chart tapos meron ditong interactive chart when you click interactive chart meron po siyang pop up i'm going to share that right now tapos you have your charting tool here this is powered by trading view and live po yung prices nito during market hours. So if you want to calculate for your risk to reward ratio, let me just desensitize this no? para hindi siya magulo. If you want to calculate for your risk to reward ratio, dito po siya sa left panel. No? You have here a uh, long position. So dito po sa drawing tools nyo, click nyo yung long position, drop nyo po doon sa 
chart, tapos adjust nyo, take profit, cut loss. And yun, you don't have to manually do it. No? So, nandyan na siya. So, preferably, again, 1 is to 3. But if you're more, uh, a little bit aggressive, pwede 1 is to 2. But uh, some people, very aggressive, 1 is to 1, which I don't recommend because, yeah, 50-50 yun. No? <laughs> Better if the reward is on your side. So, that's how you plot your risk reward. I hope we answered your question. All right. Now, let's see if my mga question for Kyle. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Uh, I think here, the, this question I can direct to you, Kyle. So using the trader's playbook, do you have historical data when the market plays? Yung percentage on risk-reward when we follow it blindly, technically or fundamentally? Ito, Kyle, will you be able to share some color here? Thanks. Uh, yes, no problem, Sir JD. So usually in our recommendation section, um, wait lang. Uh, in our recommendation section, there's already a calculated risk to reward there. And usually, we range it from the upside of 15% to a downside of around 7 to 9%. Uh, that's typically our risk to reward ratio. Um, I'm not sure lang what you mean by what the market plays. Pero siguro to give you a background on our statistics and our hit ratios and even our edge, right? There was one point, I think, during the bull market of course um our hit ratios vary also depending on the bull market and the bear market riba um a lot of uh, teachers and even great traders always say um it's better to be aggressive during a bull market and in, in a bear market it's better to trade cautiously right so in a bear market i think there was one point that our hit ratio was actually almost 30 uh, almost 70 percent no um, so that if you translate our edge of around 15% to 8%, um, it puts you in a good position of raising your up capital gains, right? But I think within the last year, um, it's, it's around, we were fluctuating between around 40%. Um, if you actually calculate the 15% uh, hit ratio uh, between the 15, 40% uh, pala, our hit ratio of 40% and our risk of 8% and 15%, you're still in the positive territory if you were able to follow our trades now. So I think we were able, like we can proudly say now, even with, even in a top bull market, in a top bear market, especially last year, in between February until uh, early December, it was really tough to make uh, traders playbooks. Um, especially in the indices, a lot of them were downtrending. Only a select few were a uh, tradable. So yeah, if you're able to follow our trades, um, again, uh, don't follow it blindly. Uh, please adjust it to your own system. But if it fits within your system, um, yeah, as mentioned, we were able to hit around forty percent. But of course, it really varies depending on the environment that we are having right now. Yeah, thanks for that, Ken. No? Uh, reiterate ko lang po ulit yung, ano, no? yung isang key takeaway kanina na your trend is your friend. So don't trade against it. No? Siyempre, uh, stocks will perform well when the market is overall performing well, good as well. No? So uh, baka that can be part of your risk mitigation factors as well na basta uptrending yung market, then you you have more uh, trade ideas. Pero siguro kung sideways sa market, you see if okay ba yung range niya. No? But uh, yeah, again, yun yung general guidance niya. And yun, no, uh, honing in on the hit ratio. No? Some people really look into that. no. But yeah, naman, syempre, we like a higher hit ratio uh, because it tells you how often we are right and how often we are wrong. But uh, I also want to hone in as well. No? Na baka if mababa yung hit ratio, then you have to acknowledge as well na yung mga risk to reward naman yon at the minimum baka 1 is to 2 so every time that you lost that's just uh, uh one unit no pero yung take profit levels mo is two units so uh yun no uh, as mentioned by Cal that might probably put you in a still positive position despite the uh ano less than expected yun na uh, risk to reward ratio and uh, hit ratio no? so Again, it's, sometimes it's not about hit ratio, but yung position sizing nyo as well. Kaya uh, we are teaching you those stuff. No? So, yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, 
here is a question. What period range do you recommend us to look after trends? No? So as a long-term investor, as a short-term investor. So ito, we get this question na uh, frequently. No? Pag tumitingin ka ba daw sa stock trend, uh, anong time frame yung titingnan mo? Uh, for me personally, no, uh, to answer the question, wala talaga tayong masasabi na fix no la sabi mo five year trend or one year trend or three month trend no for me when i look at charts no tinitingnan ko talaga yung yung trend niya at play right now when yung trend na ba yun is it uh, playing for the past three months na ba three weeks na ba or three years na uh, irregardless no parang for example nakikita niyo na uptrend na siya for the past uh, one month then you can try to zoom out as well baka sa five month period, one year period, still uptrend siya, then you zoom out as far as you can. Then, makikita niyo naman yung points in time dyan na nag-change yung sentiment niya. So, yeah, you limit yourself to that. And, uh, in general, no, better if uh, mas strong na yung, ano, no, yung trend na yun kasi the higher the probability that it would be sustained. No? So, worry na lang kayo doon sa mga change in sentiment such as breakouts or breakdowns. So maybe Kyle, you'd like to chime in on that? Um, yes. Uh, in terms of usually the introductory guide on what to look at per time frame is you can use also the moving averages, right? Um, sure, JP wasn't able to mention what the moving averages are, but as a standard guide, if you input it on your uh, chart things or on your charts, um, Essentially, the 50-day, you have the 50-day, 100-day, 200-day. Um, this is what we also use in our traders' playbook reports. But uh, um, to summarize, if the if your stock is above the 200-day, it means it's in a long-term uptrend. And if the price is above the 100-day, uh, medium-term uh, uptrend. And if it's above the 50-day, it's above a, uh, it's in a short-term uptrend. Uptrend. But of course, if you look at your charts, sometimes the 200 day is higher than 100, and is higher than 100 to 50, meaning that it's in a downtrend. Your price action. So that's um uh an easy guide on to follow in terms of the trends. But of course, there are many um what you still see in the charts. But yeah, I think that's an easy way to see it, Master JP. Yeah, thank you, Sir uh, Kyle. No? And if I may add on to that, no, though uh, yung relative position ng current price niya to your moving average could be a reference no, kung uh, bullish ba siya or bearish. But usually, yung most helpful yung moving averages during trending markets. Kasi <laughs> pag uh, yun lang yung reference mo, let's say sideways trend siya, uh, probably mga ano ka nun, whipso ka from time to time nun. So, uh, maganda yung ano uh, moving averages no uh, during trending markets kasi halata mo talaga kung uptrending or downtrending siya yung caveat lang noon is pag sideways trend yun uh, spaghetti yung ano mo <laughs> moving averages and i hope in the future we'll have a more expanded session ng best no but for now those are tackled sa gift series already but uh, yun uh, we hope uh, you'll be there as well <laughs> sa mga upcoming sessions namin all right, so I think we answered some of the questions already. Uh, ito, may nakita po akong education video kanina sa presentation. Sa so, import po ng website, makikita yon. So maybe I can share my screen. Uh, kasi I think this is something that you need to really make the most out of. So right now, you go to chart pattern recognition. Click nyo lang po yung chart pattern recognition. And this will pop out. And dito po sa magpa-pop out na window, uh, click nyo po tong learn technical analysis. When you click on that, ayan, no? so nandyan po yung modules na for free as I mentioned. Okay. Alright, so I hope I already answered that question. Ayan, no? so uh, siguro we can answer some more questions. Does technical analysis apply to mutual funds and UITFs? Uh, uh, Pwede naman, no? If you were to ask me, you can apply it, no? But for me, uh, it's better to put in, to use, no? Sa mga individual securities. Kasi you're already diversifying yourself sa mutual funds and YTFs. And yung recommendation ko niyan is 
you know, talaga uh, regularly invest, no? Uh, like, uh, peso cost average kayo sa mutual funds and UITFs. But if you want to increase your uh, contributions, let's say, pag uh, bumababa yung market, no? Kasi you want to buy more shares, lalo kung long-term investors kayo sa mutual funds, then yung first MetroSec platform naman, no? Yung charting tool niya, over din yung mutual funds and UITF. So, if you'd like, no, like for now, down a market increase yung uh, investment amount nyo, then you can do that. No, But for me, ano na yun, better put to use ang technical analysis uh, individual securities. Kasi we are optimizing our entries and exits. Okay, so, ayan, no, uh, there are still more questions, but uh, I think medyo na-answer naman namin yung most of these no, remaining questions, uh, it's already 8 p.m. <laughs> uh, that's the limit of our uh, our session tonight. And we don't want to keep you waiting. So, uh, na kayo, no? so uh, thank you to the 69 participants who stayed up until the end. And uh, with that, no, I hope you learned a lot from the session. And I yeah, uh, hope to see you in our upcoming sessions next month. And here at First MetroSec, uh, it's your future first. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.